Hello! Welcome! So I promised on Twitter that I am going to do a how to travel Japan like a pro so I sketched things out and I even took some notes for myself do, 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 do. and this is the book that I used when I'm when I was traveling this year and last year when I was traveling to Japan I just used a uh, just paper, blue sheet of paper. Let's start! Ta -da! Number one, transit. So as you can see, I taped some stuff in, on the sketchbook. So when you tra uh, travel in Japan, there are many options in Japan. So first of all, you will hear a lot of JR Pass. So that's Japan Rail Pass. And when you get it, you can take, um, I think, any JR line, including next here, which is the express um, train to Narita Airport, and then it goes to Tokyo uh, or anywhere within the area of Tokyo, so like Akihabara or Shibuya, Shinjuku. Um, so when you take JR Pass, you basically prepay about, it depends on how long you want to use it, for a week, it's about uh, 200 fifty dollars and then for two weeks it's like three hundred eighty dollars and it goes and on and only available for foreigners who is traveling from the outside of Japan and coming to Japan so you have to apply it when you're in like when you're outside of Japan so when you're already in Japan you cannot get your pass so it's a little too late for you so many people would say you have to get the JR pass because it's really good but you have to be keep in mind that um, if you're not planning to travel to uh, Tokyo and then go to Kyoto and then go to Osaka or any other places that you can only go by taking Shinkansen, then you might want to reconsider that because it's actually quite really expensive. And if you just want to stay in Tokyo, then you don't have to take uh, JR Pass with you. You can just have a Suica Pass. Which is, which is just a um, magnetic pass that you will tap into the gate and then um, you will load up money in there and uh, it's really easy because you don't have to stress about um, all the ticket that you have to buy so when you look at uh, subway map you'll be like I'm here and then to get to there uh, the price is 180 so then you have to take the 180 ticket which is like $1.80 um, and then go through the gate and if you lose the ticket then you have to pay it again so it's really a big hassle so just get the Suica Pass you pay uh, 500 yen as a deposit which is about 5 bucks and then you can put in like about I would say like 5,000 5, yen and then you can just tap everywhere you go and you don't have to worry about it so that's really convenient if you cannot find any place to buy Suica Pass it's where any of the ticket that will be sell so if you are in front of a gate into like a major major train station so for example from Narita airport um, there will be ticket machines and things like that you can just buy Suica Pass from the machine so you don't have to talk to a person Ruka is going everywhere <laughs> you don't have to worry about that it's very easy and then it has English options so you can just English option Suica Pass load this much money and then you put cash or credit card and then it's like bam done. This year though, last year I traveled with the JR Pass. This year I traveled with uh, Nex NEX which is actually um, just a ticket that goes from Tokyo to Narita uh, Airport and Narita Airport to Tokyo vice versa. So it's a round trip for 4,000 yen. Uh, yes, and it's about 33% discount which is really good. So if you don't want to if you don't want to travel to Tokyo to Osaka or all other places you just want to stay in Tokyo, um, then I highly recommend this because transit per day that you might maximum use would be like ten dollar fifteen dollar uh, if you're not riding Shinkansen and Shinkansen I think they're about uh, one hundred fifty dollars so for the next um, you just take when you go. When you're in the Naria airport, there is like the JR line um, office and they all speak your language. It doesn't matter, like they will speak Chinese, French, um, English, 
And if they cannot find anyone that talks in your language, then they will phone like a translator. So it's it's all good. So you take the next, and then they will. So you pay four thousand yen, um, and then they will give you two tickets. So one to go to Tokyo from Nara Airport, and then from Tokyo to Nara Airport. So this I, this year I went with this option and Suica Pass, which saved me money. Despite I went to Osaka with Ryan. Um, for five days, and it was still cheaper to go that way instead of getting a JR, JR pass. So, kind of consider the amount and then look into it. Um, not JR pass is always the option. All right, talked about enough of that. If you want to look inside of it, it looks like this, and then JR pass is like, look, you can go from here to here or here or here, and there are many different kinds of JR pass. So you should look into it. Uh, if you just want to be around Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto area, that that's the standard one. But if you want to go to all the way to Hokkaido or all the way down to um, Hiroshima, I think you have to get different region one. Um, I am not quite sure. You can check on that. Oh, all right. Here it is. Number two. Ta-da! Internet. So internet hotspot. Um, Basically, we got the internet hotspot, the carry, like the carry-on thing. It's a really small thing. You just rent it. Um, I went to globalcommunication.com, I believe. And uh, for Japan, you can rent a SIM card that will allow you to use text message, phone calls, and uh, I think 4G without paying gazillion dollars. It's only I'm pretty sure that would be only like hundred fifty dollars, hundred for a week or two which is very reasonable um, for like text message calls and unlimited data. Um, not maybe for two weeks, maybe for a month. Anyway, um, for us, we just uh, rented the Wi-Fi hotspot and allows about like seven devices to hook up and then they say it's unlimited data but after about, uh, was it, I think it was after 40 gigabyte, um, they will say like, they will slow down the speed so that you don't use too much. But within two weeks, for Google Map or things that you want to research, um, 40 gigabyte is plenty and enough. Uh, so yeah, most of the Wi-Fi is bad. They are really slow. You cannot really do anything with it. So don't uh, kind of like depend on hotel Wi-Fi. And then second of all. Um, you can have get access to Google Maps, so if you get lost, uh, you can just use Google Maps. Or when you get there, you don't you're not sure which uh, subway train to take, and if you just use use Google Map, it just tells you, oh, you're here. So get to this station, and then get to platform this, platform two for this line, going towards this, and then get off at this station, and then walk this way, and then done, you're there. So it's really easy. Um, there's, you don't have to print out about like you don't have to print out maps and then look through maps or have to be going in, like asking around. So it's hassle free. I got for two weeks seventy five dollars. Um, let's see, it was seven thousand six hundred fifty yen, so about seventy five dollar USD. And I got regular pocket Wi Fi seventy five megabyte uh, per second. So what you do when you get this thing is that um, they will, you will go to, you will have to say which um, Nara Airport terminal you'll be in. So there are terminal one, two, three, and then if you're taking, um, mostly you'll end up in terminal one. Um, but if you're taking Japanese airline, you'll be in terminal two, and then you'll say that you'll be in terminal one. Let's just say, and then they will say, okay, you can p either pick it up in um, terminal one post office or you, you can just deliver straight to your hotel so you can if you want to use Wi-Fi as soon as you land on Japan you can just find the post office there's only one so you don't have to worry about it it's really easy and everyone speaks English there so you could just like where's post office and uh, go there show them your passport tell them and then they will like look at your name and then they're like ah okay and then they will give you this package and then you open it up and it has the pocket Wi-Fi and then you start using it. You just turn it on, use it, and then within the envelope there is a return envelope. So keep that envelope, don't throw that away. 
and uh, when you are done using it and your vacation is over, you just put that pocket Wi-Fi and the charger that they uh, give it to you, put it in the return envelope, uh, you can just put it through uh, any post, I guess like office or like the boxes. Um, I just use um, airport one because they're everywhere in the airport as well. So you just send them away. You don't have to pay any uh, post fee because they already paid them and the envelope already have them. So it's just hassle free, super easy. I totally recommend that. All right, and three. Woo! So many things. Ugh! Oh no! Okay, three cash. So in Japan, everyone uses cash, and I think nowadays uh, credit card is actually getting better. Many people do use credit card. Many shops do use credit card, um, but any vendors that you see on the street, they will mostly accept cash. So I have some cash left over, so I um, put it on here so you can see. So this is thousand yen. Um, it's about ten dollar USD, and this is five thousand yen. It's a lady really nice. Um, it's about $50 and there are a lot of coins. They Japan use so much coin. Um, so it might not be a bad idea if you have like a coin purse, bring that with you because they have so many different kinds that they use. Uh, but I just uh, put three, the major one that you always always see. This is 10 yen, uh, it's about 10 cents and 100 yen, uh, it's about $1 and then 500 yen which is a $5 and so um, you would just use them regularly for vending machine especially um, not like North America where everyone accepts credit card or debit um, in Japan now they're starting to accept visa um, especially so if you don't have visa then I totally recommend you uh, carry cash around with you and it's really safe the country they're not gonna steal your money. Most of cases, I had, I never had any uh, case or heard any cases that they stole your wallet or something like that. So carrying cash is totally fine. Don't worry. Um, it's okay. It's good. Get it. Get some cash before you travel to Japan. And then for make a daily plan. Ta -da. So this is this was a daily plan that I made um, last year, not this year, uh, and uh, I just put it like in the easier format so you can see. So we're like, oh we'll be in Tokyo here and then we'll go to Osaka here, go to Kyoto after that, go to um, Yamanashi and then back to Tokyo, so that was our plan. And I think plan is really important because when you're in foreign country, you get really intimidated. It doesn't really matter if you speak the language or not. It's just you're surrounded with people, surrounded with people who are who have different concept of like all the things and different culture, and you kind of get spooked, and you just kind of want to go for food and then go back to the hotel and go for food and go back to the hotel and do nothing, which is not fun actually. So you want to actually make at least two or three things that you want to see nearby where you're staying or maybe you're going to a place and then around there there are two or three things that you want to see as well so for example um, I, I really like Akihabara so I'm like uh, on the first day go to Akihabara <laughs> and then second day go to Yokohama and then within Yokohama what are the things that are really uh, famous and I looked Chinatown uh, ramen museum which was Amazing, we couldn't go to Chinatown because it was pouring. Um, and then Hakejima, I'm, I'm actually, I forgot. We haven't, it was pouring, so we only went to uh, Ramen Museum there. But still, despite wet weather being horrible, actually forced us to see Yokohama and then was able to experience Ramen Museum, which is amazing, so you should check it out. Um, so, try to make um, daily plans so that you will actually force yourself to go outside, see, experience and like experience their culture. It's it's amazing. So now since I was talking about how everyone's different um, and different culture, number five is be aware with your surroundings. Uh, many people um, 
that I find that are not aware of Japanese manner. So things like, for example, when we were there uh, about, I guess, week and a half actually, uh, there were there were foreigners in the part of train, and they just talked out really loud. They were just talking loud about this American TV show that they were watching. And it's like, oh, season one was great, season two was really good. Did you see the season three? And they were just laughing, and it it was really, really embarrassing for me because um, in Japan, especially in subway, they even tell you to either turn off your cell phone or put it in a vibration mode that it does not distract your nearby passengers so that they can actually travel without listening to your life story and I kind of respect that and I like it because sometimes when people are on phone they're really loud they talk really loud and they get really angry or things like that and you just kind of like you don't want to sit next to a person who's talking really loud and angry so um, just be polite don't uh, you know when you see a train full of people but 100% silent you can whisper and things like that but don't be like oh my god did you see Dexter season 2 it's amazing I'm like it's okay you can do that when you go outside so that's you'll find that kind of weird I know but hey you're visiting their country so let's respect them second one I kind of covered it don't talk loud in public except like pub or amusement park many people don't really talk loud in Japan um, especially in public because I think they're very like aware like they're they don't want to um, I guess annoy other person so when you're in a shop when you're in um, like restaurant you don't really see anyone like laughing really loud or talking really loud so just keep that in mind but um, I'm pretty sure you'll be okay to talk really loud in amusement park and pubs because when we were in pubs people were just like drinking and having a good time and so and the third one is basically a simple body language as a gesture so nodding and then just saying thank you in Japanese or even English will help so when you nod it's just a lot of people you don't really say uh, in Japan you don't have to say like thank you every time you don't have to you just kind of acknowledge that they're there and they're providing your service so if someone is handing you very like they wrapped it really nicely and then it's like here you go you can say thank you in English you can say um, arigatou gozaimasu in Japanese or you can just like nod and then just kind of like think like it's just acknowledging that you have received the item and you are grateful with their great service so um, just kind of nod would be awesome I think that's about it if you have any question let me know I try to make it as simple as possible so I wrote it like I wrote them down a sketchbook so when I talk you can kind of see the key points as well um, I think that's about it oh yeah do not take taxi because taxis are super expensive so if you're like on a desperate line of like oh my goodness I don't know I am going to be I don't know like maybe I'll be missing this timeline I'll miss this event if I don't get there within this time like I'm in hurry things like that then I cannot stop you from taking taxi but taxi in Japan is really really expensive so be pre uh, prepare for that um, what else I think um, Suica Pass get cash um, I wrote down write down hotel addresses just in case so when you get lost people will actually be able to read the hotel address and then tell you because Japan is such an old country that they don't have um, name for every street there will be more nameless streets than named streets so you get really confused and if you just tell them this hotel name there will be so many hotels around it that they would not be able to find like which hotel but if you have like especially if you're using a taxi um, just writing down uh, address even in English and you can just say out loud to them um, will help you because it helped us last year 
Um, I said write daily diaries. Um, I, I write daily diaries so that when I look back, I know what exactly I did and then just kind of like think about it and then it's like, oh, those are the good times. Um, do, do, do. Oh, most of the hotels um, will be really, really small, about 118 square feet. So you just just expect that. You don't, you don't get the really big hotel rooms. So pack lightly. And then if you're on a budget, then don't be afraid to try hostels. Uh, when I first traveled to Japan basically by myself, um, I used ho uh, hostels and it was really cheap. People are really, really nice and people who stay in hostels are really nice as well. They're just backpackers. They're, um, they're like 25 or older or about your age, about like 18 or so and they just want to travel, they don't want to disturb anyone's day so like the rooms are really clean, um, hostels are really cheap so if you are either want to travel to Penn in a low budget I totally recommend hostels um, and try out food that are not super expensive you might think like oh I have to eat sushi and then you might find like the best sushi in town you don't have to do that, you, there are so many sushi places especially um, the convey conveyor belt sushi they're really cheap so you can actually travel to Japan quite cheap so don't be scared um, what else what else oh if you go to book off that's a store called book off and they sell used game used manga books uh, used uh, uh, music CDs and stuff like that so if you're also on budget then you can find video games, manga, books, city on basically half the price or even cheaper and they're not even damaged at all. They are like perfectly new. It looks perfectly new. So um, don't be afraid to go to book off and shop crazy because that's what I do. Um, yeah, don't be shy to travel all over Japan, even small towns. Even small towns, people, they, we, like, I traveled into, like, a really small town and there was literally no one speaking English. And then back then, my Japanese was not that good. But within that small town, they were like, hey, isn't this guy speak a little bit of English? And then they just, like, called him over and then, like, um, they brought him to the station and it's like, hey, so what can I do to help you guys? And then we were like, oh, we're trying to find this place, like, could you help us? And it was really cool. Um, and you will not really get that kind of like the care and kindness um, in big cities. So it was a cool experience and I still remember it. And it was really good. It was really fun. Um, so yeah. So for example, this year, this was the plan. It's a little more sketched out. <laughs> but, and then I wrote like all the diaries on the side. And then I also kept track with the cash because once the cash is out, it's out. You can get more cash from the bank in Japan, but you have to pay a lot of fee, I think. So I didn't want to pay like huge amount of fee for something if I was able to be aware of what I was spending then I could just prevent it for future so yeah I hope this video helped you guys let me know if you have any questions I'll try to answer as best as I could and I'll see you guys on the next time say goodbye diddle 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 bye diddle